natural resources. Introduction The outer crust of the earth is called the lithosphere. Water covers 75% of the earth's surface. It is also found underground. These comprise the hydrosphere. The air that covers the whole of the earth like a blanket is called the atmosphere. Living things are found where these three exist. The life-supporting zone of the earth where the atmosphere, the hydrosphere and the lithosphere interact and make life possible is known as the biosphere. Air currents Place a candle in a beaker or wide-mouthed bottle and light it. Light an incense stick and take it to the mouth of the above bottle, which makes the smoke flow when the incense stick is kept near the edge of the mouth. It flows towards the beaker. Which way does the smoke flow when the incense stick is kept a little above the candle? Smoke flows out of the beaker. Which way does the smoke flow when the incense stick is kept in other regions? Smoke deviates in different regions. The patterns revealed by the smoke show us directions in which hot and cold air move. In a similar manner, when air is heated by radiation from the heated land or water, it rises. But since land gets heated faster than water, the air over land would also be heated faster than the air over water bodies. Rain When water bodies are heated during the day, a large amount of water evaporates and goes into the air. Some amount of water vapor also gets into the atmosphere because of various biological activities. This air also gets heated up. The hot air rises up, carrying the water vapor with it. As the air rises, it expands and cools. This cooling causes the water vapor in the air to condense in the form of tiny droplets. This condensation of water is facilitated if some particles could act as the nucleus for these drops to form around. Normally, dust and other suspended particles in the air perform this function. Once water droplets are formed, they grow bigger by the condensation of these water droplets. When the drops have grown big and heavy, they fall down in the form of rain. Sometimes, when the temperature of air is low enough, precipitation may occur in the form of snow, sleet or hail. Air Pollution The fossil fuels like coal and petroleum contain small amounts of nitrogen and sulphur. When these fuels are burnt, nitrogen and sulphur too are burnt and this produces different oxides of nitrogen and sulphur. Not only is the inhalation of these gases dangerous, they also dissolve in rain to give rise to acid rain. The combustion of fossil fuels also increases the amount of suspended particles in air. These suspended particles could be unburnt carbon particles or substances called hydrocarbons. Presence of high levels of all these pollutants cause visibility to be lowered, especially in cold weather when water also condenses out of air. Effect of Air Pollution Studies have shown that regularly breathing air that contains any of these substances increases the incidence of allergies, cancer and heart diseases. An increase in the content of these harmful substances in air is called air pollution. Lichens Organisms called lichens are found to be very sensitive to the levels of contaminants like sulfur dioxide in the air. Lichens can be commonly found growing on the barks of trees as a thin greenish-white crust. Water pollution The addition of undesirable substances to water bodies. These substances could be fertilizers and pesticides used in farming or they could be poisonous substances like mercury salts which are used by paper industries. These could also be disease-causing organisms, like the bacteria which cause cholera. The removal of desirable substances from water bodies. Dissolved oxygen is used by the animals and plants that live in water. Any change that reduces the amount of this dissolved oxygen would adversely affect these aquatic organisms. Other nutrients could also be depleted from the water bodies.
Effect of water flow. Take two identical trays and fill them with soil. Plant mustard or green gram or paddy in one of the trays and water both the trays regularly for a few days till the first tray is covered by plant growth. Now, tilt both the trays and fix them in that position. Make sure that both the trays are tilted at the same angle. Pour equal amount of soil gently on both trays such that the water flows out of the trays. Study the amount of soil that is carried out of the trays. Is the amount the same in both the trays? Now, pour equal amounts of water on both the trays from a height. Pour three or four times the amount that you poured earlier. Study the amount of soil that is carried out of the trays now. Is the amount the same in both the trays? The amount of soil that is carried out more or less or equal to the amount washed out earlier. The roots of plants have an important role in preventing soil erosion. The large-scale deforestation that is happening all over the world not only destroys biodiversity, it also leads to soil erosion. Topsoil that is bare of vegetation is likely to be removed very quickly and this is accelerated in hilly or mountainous regions. This process of soil erosion is very difficult to reverse. Vegetative cover on the ground has a role to play in the percolation of water into deeper layers too. Water cycle Water cycle The whole process in which water evaporates and falls on the land as rain and later flows back into the sea via rivers is known as the water cycle. All of the water that falls on the land does not immediately flow back into the sea. Some of it seeps into the soil and becomes part of the underground reservoir of fresh water. Some of these underground water finds its way to the surface through springs. Or we bring it to the surface for our use through wells or tube wells. Water is also used by terrestrial animals and plants for various life processes. The Nitrogen Cycle Nitrogen gas makes up 78% of our atmosphere and nitrogen is also a part of many molecules essential to life like proteins, nucleic acids, DNA and RNA and some vitamins. Nitrogen is found in other biologically important compounds such as alkaloids and urea too. Nitrogen is thus an essential nutrient for life forms and life would be simple if all these life forms could use the atmospheric nitrogen directly. However, other than a few forms of bacteria, life forms are not able to convert the comparatively inert nitrogen molecule into forms like nitrates and nitrides which can be taken up and used to make the required molecules. The Carbon Cycle In the combined state, it is found as carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, as carbonate and hydrogen carbonate salts in various minerals, while all life forms are based on carbon-containing molecules like proteins, carbohydrates, fats, nucleic acids and vitamins. The endoskeletons and exoskeletons of various animals are also formed from carbonate salts. Carbon is incorporated into life forms through the basic process of photosynthesis, which is performed in the presence of sunlight by all life forms that contain chlorophyll. This process converts carbon dioxide from the atmosphere or dissolved in water into glucose molecules. The Greenhouse Effect Heat is trapped by glass and hence the temperature inside a glass enclosure will be much higher than the surroundings. This phenomenon was used to create an enclosure where tropical plants could be warmed during the winters in colder climates. Such enclosures are called greenhouses. Greenhouses have also lent their name to an atmospheric phenomenon. Some gases in the atmospheric would cause the average temperatures to increase worldwide and this is called the greenhouse effect. Carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases. An increase in the carbon dioxide content in the atmosphere 
would cause more heat to be retained by atmosphere and lead to global warming. The Oxygen Cycle It is found in the elemental form in the atmosphere to the extent of 21%. It also occurs extensively in the combined form in the Earth's crust as well as also in the air in the form of carbon dioxide. Oxygen from the atmosphere is used up in three processes, namely combustion, respiration and in the formation of oxides of nitrogen. Oxygen is returned to the atmosphere in only one major process, that is photosynthesis. And this forms the broad outline of the oxygen cycle in nature. Some forms of life, especially bacteria, are poisoned by elemental oxygen. In fact, even the process of nitrogen fixing by bacteria does not take place in the presence of oxygen. Ozone layer Elemental oxygen is normally found in the form of a diatomic molecule. However, in the upper reaches of the atmosphere, a molecule containing three atoms of oxygen is found. This would mean a formula of O3 and this is called ozone. Unlike the normal diatomic molecule of oxygen, ozone is poisonous and we are lucky that it is not stable nearer to the Earth's surface. But it performs an essential function where it is found. It absorbs harmful radiations from the sun. This prevents those harmful radiations from reaching the surface of the Earth where they may damage many forms of life. Various man-made compounds like CFCs carbon compounds having both fluorine and chlorine, which are very stable and not degraded by any biological process, were found to persist in the atmosphere. Once they reached the ozone layer, they would react with the ozone molecules. This resulted in a reduction of the ozone layer, and recently they have discovered a hole in the ozone layer above the Antarctica. It is difficult to imagine the consequences of life on Earth, if the ozone layer dwindles further.